before uh, I get into the serve, because I know we got all kinds of ages and levels, you know, five-year-olds, some people are nicely ranked, some are playing all kinds of tournaments. So I want to go through all the progressions of the serve. And if your mom or dad's like recording this, this is going to be like gold. So I can go through it step by step and you'll have like a roadmap or a blueprint exactly what to do. But before I even get into that, okay, let me just um, back the truck up a little bit and tell you like a, just a quick story uh, from a long time ago and probably even Chase. So you guys weren't even on earth at this time, but um, back in 1991, when I, uh, I jumped on an airplane for whatever reason, and I went out to Compton, and I you know, evaluated Venus and uh, Serena when they were like your guy's age. They were like nine and 10 years old, and we met at the hotel room that night, and it was just like yesterday, where Orsine and Richard and Venus and Serena come in the hotel room, and Venus was on one leg, and Serena was on the other leg, and they were hugging and kissing and like a close-knit family like no other. Just like if any of you saw that in the movie, that's exactly the way that family was, okay? So the next day, he says, we're gonna go practice at East Compton Hills Country Club. Trust me, it wasn't East Hills Country Club, but this guy was uh, a live firecracker as you saw in the movie. So they picked me up in that bus that you saw in the movie, if anybody, I get in the passenger side, I, I actually got harpooned in the buttock by a spring, okay, sticking up, and then I looked in the back, and there was Venus and Serena, and there was like McDonald's wrappers and old garbage and just crazy stuff in the back, and they were back there like that. So about 15 minutes into the drive, we were going to East Compton Hills Country Club, and I'm looking around going, it's a strange place for a country club, and we pull up to this park, Okay, at 7.30 in the morning in Compton, California, we get out, there's like 20 guys like shooting baskets, people are passed out, drinking, smoking, and all this crazy stuff. We get out and they go, hey Richard, because all the people there kind of knew him, hey King Richard. This was 1991, they called this guy King Richard, and they said, hey BW, Venus Williams, and hey Meek, her middle name was Serena Jamika Williams, because the New York Times was there like, four months earlier and they did a story on Venus because she was 10 years old and undefeated uh, in the 10s, whatever whatever that means. That doesn't mean a lot, but it means something. So they kind of knew who they were, especially these two little kids that played in Compton. So we go across the basketball court, okay? I kind of stood out a little bit, okay? Kind of like you saw in the movie. We go across the basketball court and I had a brand new box of Wilson balls. And this is very important, you guys understand. And Richard goes, we don't use new balls. We don't use new balls. I want old balls. I want them bending and digging them out. I want the balls low. I want them to dig them out. I got it. It was a little different, you know, it was a little different. So now we go onto the court, okay? And the court, like none of us would even play on the court, but they played on the court. So then we go to the net post. There was a shopping cart, just like the one you saw in the movie. Well, maybe not the exact one, because it's a long time ago and there was like seven chains wrapped around it. It took this guy 20 minutes to get the chains off the cart. And I'm sitting there going, this is, this is crazy. And he looked at me, he goes, Rick, I gotta chain it down. It won't be here in the morning. So listen, because all you, where I'm going with a lot of this, you guys gotta appreciate your parents. Yeah, you're getting an opportunity. Listen to this story. So now we start playing. I start doing all kinds of drills, okay? And when I say this, there's probably eight people here right now that were better than both of them. Right now, that were better. So we're out there on the court, and before that, I had a girl, some of you heard of, she was actually in the movie, uh, Jennifer Capriotti. As a 12-year-old, she won the 18 Nationals. Now that's just insane. That's a record from 1988 that still stands today. Oh, never will be broken. I mean, she's like the Wizard of Oz, top 10 in the world at 14. So my blueprint for like, greatness was probably better than anybody in the world just so i'm out there and i'm feeding balls to venus and serena there's arms going one way and legs going the other and bees were flying off their head and i'm going what in god's name am i doing in compton california because i just had this jennifer capriotti who was amazing poetry of motion racket back in the parking lot low center of gravity the balls on a string 
I mean, great fundamentals by the late, great Jimmy Everett. So I'm sitting there going, they might be maybe top 100 in the nation. Not that that's anything to sneeze about, but it wasn't anything special. So now after an hour, okay, I say, let's play competitive points. And it was more about Venus, like you saw in the movie. It was more about her, because she was older, more mature. She was almost 5'9". Serena was like, like some of you guys side, a little prankster. It's like she didn't want to be there, all right? And when I tell her these stories, she's just laughing and crying because she's a mom now. But she knows that back then, it was like she wasn't there. So now we start playing competitive points. And the whole landscape changed, okay? They started popping the popcorn, extra butter. You guys know what that means? Yeah. What? Thousand. What? Thousand. What did he say? Thousand. Yeah, it, just, it, the, the, it was like, when I said game on, it, the whole thing changed. It's like their footwork, it was just like, bah, 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 all over the place. The preparation was like, bang, bang. Not that it was amazing, but it was like, whoa. It's like the fans are in the stands, it meant something, and we were gonna compete. Okay, we were gonna compete, all right? And so, it was crazy. Then, pay attention, then, when they ran for the ball, okay the ball say it was that high off the ground their nose was almost in the ground i never saw and i see it in some of you guys i never saw two little girls try so hard in my life now that doesn't mean you're going to be a world-class tennis player but in the game of life just that quality alone that's gonna that's gonna take you far whether whatever you decide to do but i'm sitting there going whoa this is crazy so now i'm thinking because Serena's about the size of him. Venus was, I don't know, about like your size. I'm sitting there going, okay, this is the coach in me. 5'11", you know, 150, six feet, 160. I'm starting to project where this could go at 18. I'm saying that the, what's inside was something I never saw. The determination and the rage. The ball could be over at that wall and they'd run for it. Some of you guys, you know the ball's out, you go out. It's like, yeah, it's my birthday. No, they, it didn't matter if the ball was out. They, it was a rage inside. There was a rage inside these two little girls. That's crazy. And I said, that was baked in extra crispy, probably from birth. You know, how just the competitiveness and just, I got to get to every ball. Forget the outside. That could be taught. Okay? So once I saw this and I go to Richard, it's in the movie. I said, Richard, come here. Let me tell you something. You got the next female, Michael Jordan. And he puts his arm around me and he goes, no brother, man, I got the next two. And Serena, she kind of knew where the ball was going before you hit it. And she had all the time in the world, but it looked like she was sloppy and lazy. But I saw that, it's on video back from 1991. But at that time, a lot of you guys are better than her at that time. And I had over 10,000 parents tell me when they see that video, well, my kid's better than that. It's not where you start, it's where you finish, okay? So the moral of the story, this is a long-term process. You can learn the strokes. You can learn the strategy, all right? But giving 100% every time and running for every ball and love to compete. You love to compete. That's why you do this. Roddick had that. Sharapova had that. Capriati had that. Kennan had that. Just anybody, anytime, anywhere. You got to just love to compete. You cannot be afraid to fail. You cannot be afraid to lose if you want to succeed. I cannot stress this enough, okay? But just that quality alone, that quality alone, Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're gonna get it on. Win, lose, or draw. So that's what I saw, because I took this crazy chance, okay, on these two little kids that no one else really saw, but it was what I saw on the inside. Because on the outside, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. So the moral of the story is, you work hard, you have the right attitude, you don't make excuses, and at the end of the day, what I said about, you know, appreciate what your parents do, you guys, okay, got to be appreciative of them having the opportunity. And one of the things I tell everybody, I wish they would put in the movie.
good day, bad day, happy day, sad day. When they went off the course, just relax. I'll get to you in a minute. Rick, thank you very much. And give me a hug, okay? Sure, was mad. The hug kind of went around my neck a little bit, but that's okay. I kind of like that, you know, vinegar. So, and every day they brought their books to the court. And if it rained, the dad made them go up to my office and study. This is stuff you don't see. You got to have gratitude. You got to appreciate things, okay? Even though I said all this competitive stuff, very, very important that you guys understand just what I said. And I wanted to share that with you. We took a negative, which are a little wet, turn it into positive to get me unfiltered, raw. So hopefully you guys can look at the video that your parents take, just took. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. I got a million stories like that, but I know a lot of people have seen the movie and as, they, as you guys know, the rest is history. So I need everybody to spread out a little bit, okay? So you've got room to move the racket. I need the coaches to help me out here, okay? Everybody, right here, yes, sir. Everybody, just make sure you got space. Okay, now, okay, right here, this is good. Okay, you can still video. Okay, let me talk a little bit let me talk a little bit about the serve. Now, for some of the older people, or some of the pros that I work with, there's like over 30 on the tour that come here, or some of the nationally ranked kids or whatever, it's more about the biomechanics of the serve and how this thing is put together, okay? There's not a wrong way or a right way, there's a better way. And there's a better way to serve, but I can't get into that right now because there's so many different levels. But even people on the tour, that have won Orange Bowl, Eddie Herr, Junior Wimbledon. Okay, their serves are biomechanically incorrect. Especially a lot of the girls that are on the uh, uh, on the tour, because they're, they're, the way they synchronize it is wrong. So even at that level, if you do millions of things, you can master something that's not really right. So we got different levels here, so I want everybody to understand. I don't care what age you are or where you're at, you gotta hold the racket properly. So I need all the coaches to help me out. It's very vanilla, it's gonna be very basic. When you grab the racket, here's how you find the grip. You put the racket in your other hand, you slide your hand right down, and that would be called a continental grip. So I need all the coaches to go around. I want every kid here holding the racket with continental. When you practice serves today, if it makes a left turn towards Miami, I don't care. The more you fail, what's gonna happen? And then succeed. Now, if you're playing a tournament and you want to hit the, the New York Lollipop or the Chicago Lollipop, <laughs> I get doing that. But I don't want that, okay? You practice the right way. Some people say, oh, they're going to get injured. Listen, I've done this more than anybody. I know what's going on. It doesn't, that's a, you don't base it on age. It's ability. It's talent. It's not one size fits all. So I need all the coaches to check the grip. Are we good? Okay, so now what happens is with a lot of you guys, everybody listen up, especially you little ones. At home, people are telling you when you take the racket back, and I'm sure you've heard this, when you're taking the racket back, they're telling you, oh, you got like a frying pan, or you got like a pizza. Now you're made you hungry, okay? Or a waiter, okay, or your hands opening up. This is what we call external rotation. You don't need to know that, even though I just told you. But no, you don't, the reason, and they're telling you to do that, or they're not telling you're doing that, that's what I meant. You're probably doing something like that because you know you can get it in. But that's not what we want. And I'm going to explain that in a second. At the end of the day, all right, you have to understand what happens here. And if you look from a back to you, watch this. When you have the right grip, because if you don't have the right grip, none of this is going to matter. On the forehand and the backhand, it's different. There's four different grips, or maybe five or six. On the serve, there's two. Continental, bang, bang. That's it. Anything else, the rest is not going to happen. It's just impossible physically to do it. So look, everybody spread out. I want the kids, even the little ones, to take the racket back. I want the racket, when you go back, just imitate. Sometimes, instead of listening to someone like me, just follow and imitate. Because some of you guys learn better visual. You learn better visual instead of some guy just chirping away. So watch. When you go back, the strings are down. Everybody, coaches, I need your help. So when you go back, go all the way back to the fence for now. I want the strings down. There's already people opening the racket. That's all right. Watch. The palm is down. Watch this. So the palm is down. Look at the racket. 
when I go back, and by the way, it's not in the water, probably the one of the greatest serves of all time, Andy Roddy, had the most powerful serve, okay, and the highest percentage. And if I showed you videotape of that at nine years old, you'd go, whoa, 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 it was a train wreck from Texas. I mean, there's so many things wrong. And by the way, Serena's going down as the greatest serve in the history of tennis. So it's one thing to hit it hard, and Alicia Parks. Okay, you don't know her, but watch video 12, tell on Tennis Channel, she'll have the best, fastest serve on the tour. Bang, fast forward, eight years later, she has the fastest serve on the tour. It's all mechanics, all right? And if you put it on a great athlete with a great attitude, good things come out of the oven, okay? So watch this. So, palm is down. So I need everybody, to, all the coaches, check it out. Make sure you're sideways. I don't know where some of you guys are hitting the ball. Be sideways when you're hitting it this way. So, now, here is the leader in the clubhouse. Watch. Help out these little ones. I want the little ones getting more help than the big, big people. Nothing against the big people, but you've already had What? So, I want the edge. Look at this. This is called the edge. Everybody listen. This is called the edge of the racket. Watch. The edge goes in. The edge goes down. Okay? The edge goes out. Look at that back view. Some of the parents videotape. Look at it. Now, this is called internal rotation. The edge comes up, and you high-five the giant. So, looking from this way, so you guys got a visual, look. The edge of the racket goes in. So you don't go like this, you don't go, wee, you don't go like, wee. You don't do that, because you're little, and you don't have strength. This is why, wee, that's why that happens. So, it's not, any guys ever you have put on a birthday hat? Come on, watch, you go back, look. Edge knocks off the birthday hat. Okay? The edge knocks off the hat. So if I went like this, you ain't knocking off the hat. Alright? <laughs> Maybe a big sombrero. But so, this is the birthday hat. The edge. A halo. Salute. Okay? So watch this. Edge in. Edge down. Edge up. And what do you do at the end? You get a shirt. We just got new ones in now the oven. Okay, we got like 200. You get it in I like people that are, I want leaders. I don't need followers. There's enough of that crap. Okay, let's do it together. Don't hit your neighbor, okay? I don't need anybody else doing it. Spread out. Again, ready? Edge in, say it. Edge down. Edge out. Edge up. High five the giant. Showtime, let's get to work. Let's go, let's go. Everybody is getting the group. Okay.